Hello, guys and gals, me and Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Deep Web Browsing. The series, the Sunday rather, where we take a look at the dark side, the deep web, the dank web, whatever you want to call it, and see what this ever-evolving platform of anonymity has to offer. Now, what are we going to see on tour today? Well... Sit back, relax, and let's see what the first website is going to be. I'm not going to hold you on for here too long. Let's go after the beep transition over here, by the way, the transition to the transition I always use. And let's go see what the very first website is now. So uh, the very first website that uh, we have come this week is actually what is called the Shaman Mixtape. Believe it or not, the Deep Web's very first mixtape that we have come across, ladies and gentlemen. This is Welcome to the Great Dawn, the Great Work Mixtape, 2010, Shaman. The file seemed to have been prepared by Shaman December 24, 2009. A zip was released on December 31st, and I got it on the 1st of January 2010. Around the beginning of 2010, the songs had videos up on YouTube. As of 2012, the Great Work mixtape has much was much less available, as in, not at all. No longer on YouTube or metaphysical source. It seems to be meant for Freenet. Happy birthday to my dog, LBRP, uploaded 2014-8. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the great work of the shaman remembering Caesar. We have, ladies and gentlemen, the first mixtape available on the deep web. No, I'm not joking you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a deep web mixtape. In fact, I'm going to actually click on one of the songs here. So what is this major arc? Oh, wow, everything's banned now. My, nowadays, please, let's hope this magic magical bounty of music doesn't get missing or anything. Oh, shit, it's all forbidden. Fuck, Ouija? Look, look at these songs. It's called Major Arcana, Now I Daze, My Life, Small Act, Astral Lovers, In Other World Chong, the hit, the hit A uh, Hot Track, Shaman, The Magus, Divination, D Divination, An Anunnaki, False Prophets, LBRP, Neophyte, Paid the Cost, Misunderstood, Ouija, I'm So Occult, Dr. Regardi, Regard I, Mythology, Sixth Sense, Supernatural, Goodbye. Bonus tracks, by the way. Remember Caesar, and he has a readme here, too. Which, files downloader from www.metaphysicalsource.com. What the fuck? Actually, wait, hold on. Open a new tab, ladies and gentlemen. A metaphysical source. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, the first website that we've been to this week has already put a fucking smile on my face. <laughs> Never would I have thought I'd come across a mixtape on the deep web. Here he has like a flagging on here, and then he has like an about section. I want to see, so they got like advertisements here, but obviously nobody's fucking advertising over there right now. Um, I can't really see like an about page. I'm not going to flag him because, you know, the guy's trying to make music and everything, trying to make some paper. Uh, I can't access metaphysicalsource.com. What is this? The free... No oh, wait, this is just, like, uh, the, the the site that hosts it. Um, but, yeah, no, this was uh, this was Shaman, uh, the, the mixtape dropper on the deep web. He took all of the shit off the clear web so you guys can't access it without Tor. And he put that shit up so, you know, we can we can get the great work mixtape. Now, I don't, I don't have a download for it, unfortunately. So, Shaman, if you ever come across this video, we'd love to hear your hot beats, your banging tracks. And I actually want to hear this because I don't know what it's... I, I assume it's going to be like some satanic shit, you know, like some deep world, like, because he's got like I'm So Occult thrown up here too. Sixth Sense, Mythology. So I'm thinking it's like Satanist rap or occult rap. I don't know. Um, it may not even be rap in the first place. It may not be... It may be a totally different kind of mixtape, but I'm actually kind of interested to see what the fuck the mixtape could be. So if you ever get in touch, please share your hot beats with us. Peace. Happy birthday to the dog, LBRP. I don't know if that's actually a dog or like a friend, but, you know, I'm going to assume it's a friend because, you know, mixtape and whatnot. Uh, there's albums over here. Great work. Remembering Caesar. Well, we will remember Caesar indeed. Part of Gorilla Unit. That being said, let's go to the next website. Oh, wait. No. Wait, wait, wait. Hope I didn't cut yet. This is Metaphysical Source. This is where, like, the videos were originally available. And this isn't, like, you know, a fucking different domain, ladies and gentlemen. The Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse. Holy shit, what are we into? How does quantum physics work, you may ask? What is it and where does it come from? This was hosting as mixtapes? Are you... Are you fucking serious right now? You, you, were, you were hosting the mixtape tracks? Boy, I would not have expected it, man. They even have a Twitter... Let me go to the Twitter site. I did not expect this to actually be a thing. That was fucking weird. Johnny Enoch is a guy who runs the site, man. That's 
That's interesting, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here you go from Shaman, the great mixtape warrior, all the way to a site all about the metaphysical man. Fucking deep web. The, 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 the links are unreal. Ladies and gentlemen, the next area we've been to is this archive of fucking weaponry, I assume, and explosives made out of ordinary equipment. We have the coffee creamer fireball. I always show you all some magic stuff here on the internet, you know, the deep web. And please don't fucking try this at home. That's a disclaimer. Don't build fucking bombs in your house. All right, that's not a smart thing, but here we go. We have the coffee creamer fireball. So you need 13 non-dairy coffee creamer packets and emptied into a tube on top of 10 grams of black powder. Total weight, 43.8 grams. I assume you get coffee creamer from, like, I don't know, last place I checked. I got it from, like, hotels and shit. Anyways, body constructions. This is, like, the body. I think he has, like, a, I think this is, like, a 7-Up can or some shit like that, or Coors Light. Uh, cut up a wash and dried aluminum can, yeah, and roll it into a shape. Also, cut a piece in this shape. There's, like, different links you go to as well. Uh, so this is the shape you need to cut it in, the CCS star, whatever. Poke a hole for the fuse, and hot glue in place as an end plug. Assemble charge ready for firing. Oh, that was a pretty... Oh, wait, he has a video available. Holy shit, let me go see the video. Oh, it's on YouTube? Oh my god, wait, let me see this shit. It's gonna load up like crazy. I know, I know, I've read some of the comments. Uh, we're watching YouTube within a YouTube video. Oh yeah, we're going full Inception in the series. But, uh, I don't know why it's taking, like, forever for it to fucking load up. But it's a 12-second coffee creamer fireball by... Nuclear Rabbit, which that is actually the person on the deep web too that we're going to contact. Here we go, it worked. Holy shit! That's really what, like, 11 packets of coffee cream are doing? What the fuck is in that shit? My god, this is making me not want to drink coffee. Holy fucking shit. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the classic coffee concepts. <laughs> what the fuck? And you need, like, non-dairy. Holy shit. Dude, fucking creamer is crazy. I don't know if you need non-dairy or just, like... Oh, yeah, you do need non-dairy, so fuck. What the hell is in non-dairy fucking creamer? Corn syrup, partially hygienic... You know, phosphate? It's probably the phosphate, I think. Uh, holy shit, dude. This stuff is crazy, man. Let me tell you, I'm not fucking around with no coffee creamer anymore, dude. That shit was a pretty fucking intense explosion. I'm gonna be honest. It was like a smoke signal just went up. Damn. Crazy ass shit. Okay, uh, I believe I have found something incredibly fucked up. People might want to sit away for this part of the video. This is, uh, if you can read by the title, Butchering the Human Carcass for Human Consumption by Bob Arson. I shit you not, somebody has written a guide on how to cut up a human being to consume later. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first bout of cannibalism we have on our Deep Web series. So let's see this. It's a step-by-step -step side uh, guide on how to break down the human body from the full figure. Now, I'm just going to skip this, by the way. Ser serviceable choice cuts of meat. There are a number of methods to the practice. You may wish to view this as a set of suggestions rather than concrete rules. You will notice that the carving of the larger and commercial cuts down at the... Thank God, this doesn't have pictures, by the way. Also, the use of human fat and viscera is genuinely avoided and only left to the most experimental chef. Oh, God. These choices, along with recipes and service... Oh, my God. They're going to give me recipes? Are you fucking out of your mind? Okay, so before getting to the main task, it is mentioned that uh, the complete rendering of the human carcass requires a fairly large amount of time, effort, and space. The consumer does not wish to go through the ordeal of processing and storing the bulk of the entire animal. An easy alternative is as follows. Simply saw through one of both legs of the points directly below the groins and a few inches above the knee. Once skinned, these portions may be cut into round steaks with the carver's preferred thickness, cut into fillets, deboned for a roast... Uh, meat for several meals is thus readily obtained without the need for gutting and the, and the complexities of preparing the entire form. The human being, also referred to the culinary history as a long pig and hairless goat, in the case of younger specimens, is not generally thought of as a staple food source. I can tell why! Observing the anatomy and skeletons, one can see that the animal is neither built nor bred for its meat, and as such will not provide nearly as much flesh as a pig or cow. For example, an average 1,000-pound steer breaks down to provide 432 pounds of saleable beef. The large central pelvis... Um, okay, specimen... Oh, my God. Uh, here's how it's meant, okay? It's very important to remember that animals raised for slaughter are kept in tightly controlled environments with their health and diet carefully maintained. Humans are not. Thus, not only is the meat of each person of varying quality, but people are also subject to an enormous range of diseases, infections, chemical imbalances, and poisonous bad habits all typically increasing with age. Also, as an animal ages, the meat loses its tenderness, becoming tough and stringy. 
No farm animal is ever allowed to age for 30 years. 6 to 13 months old is a more common slaughtering point. You will obviously want a youthful but mature physically fit human in apparently good health. A certain amount of fat is desirable as marbling to add a juicy, flavorful quality to the meat. We personally prefer firm, Caucasian... Oh my god! What the fuck? Hold on, let's go down a little bit. Oh. I'm starting to picture this a little bit. Body preparation. <coughs> okay. Uh, acquiring the subject is up to you for best results in health. Freshness is imperative. A living human is ca in captivity is optimal, but not always available. When possible, make sure the animal has no food for 48 hours, but plenty of water. The fasting helps flush the system, purging stored toxins and bodily wastes, as well as making bleeding and cleaning easier. Under ideal conditions, the specimen will be stunned into insensitivity. Sharp, unexpected blows to the head are best. Tranquilizer is not recommended, as they may taint the flavor of the meat. If this is not possible without exciting the animal and causing a struggle, which will pump a greater volume of blood and secretions such as adrenaline throughout the body, a single bullet through the middle of the forehead or back of the... So oh my god. Hanging. They got uh, the bleeding up there. They got, like, beheading and shit. Skinning. Gutting. Uh, making a cut around the anus or bung. Uh, remove arms. Half carcasses. Quarter oh my god, I'm going to skip through some of this. That's basically it. The average freezer provides plenty of storage space. Um, you may even want to build a simple old-fashioned smokehouse, just like an outhouse with a stone fire pit around instead of a shitter. Offal and other waste trimmings can be disposed of in uh, a number of ways, burial, animal feed, and puree, and flesh being just a few. Bones will dry and become brittle after being baked in an oven and can be pulverized. Bob Arson's White Devil Dinky Dow Motherfucker Babacu Sauce. Marinade based dip bloody Leroy mix. Oh my god, this is so you know, it's like the first couple episodes we learned how to murder a guy with that one book. Now we learned how to eat a motherfucker. Well let's see what the marinade and shit is. So ingredients you need one eight ounce can of tomato sauce, a six ounce can of tomato paste, one cup black coffee, three and a three three quarters cup beer, Killian's red preferred, three cup uh, three three four cup uh, fruit juice. Uh, orange pineapple mango type, by the way. Two tablespoon whiskey, one tablespoon lemon juice, one tablespoon Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon vinegar, red wine garlic preferred, three, goes garlic, three cloves garlic, three jalapeno peppers, a quarter large onion, one eighth red, one eighth white, uh, two and a half tablespoon liquid smoke, two tablespoon brown sugar, one tablespoon molasses, one and a half tablespoon crushed red pepper, one cube of beef bullion, which is that uh, beef like dried cube you get in the stores. Uh, one and a half tablespoon salt, one half tablespoon ground pepper, paprika, cayenne pepper, three dashes basil, three dashes oregano, three dashes savory, ashes of one fine thin joint. Oh my fucking god. And it comes from what? The Church of Euthanasia? The fuck? Is this like... Hold on, let me, let me access Microsoft Edge here. This is just too fucking much. What the fuck, dude? The internet is a sick place. What is this shit? Paranoia.com? Took us to a Disney site? Alright, what the fuck is this? Society for Cutting Up Men Manifesto by Valerie Solanas. Alright, before anybody gets political and shit, let's read this thing out, okay? Alright, this, this might be- this might be fucking cool. Life in the society being at least an utter bore, no aspect of society being at all relevant to women, there remains to be civic-minded, responsible, thrill-seeking females only to overthrow the government, eliminate the money system, institute complete automation, and destroy the male sex. Whew. Oh, fuck, I am scared. It is not technically possible to reproduce without the aid of males, or for that matter, females, and to produce only females. We must begin immediately to do so. The male is a biological accident. The Y male gene is an incomplete X gene, and that... That is, has an incomplete set of chromosomes. In other words, the male is an incomplete female. A walking abortion. Aborted at the... Wow, dude. This is making me feel sad. To be male is to be deficient. Emotionally limited. Maleness is a deficiency disease and males are emotional cripples. The male is completely egocentric, trapped inside himself, and capable of empathizing or identifying with others. Of love, friendship, affection, or tenderness. He is a completely isolated unit, incapable of rapport with anyone. His responses are entirely visceral, not cerebral. His intelligence is a mere tool in service of his drives and needs. He is incapable of mental passion, mental interaction. He can't relate to anything other than his own physical sensations. He is a half-dead, unresponsive lump, incapable of giving or receiving pleasure or happiness. 
Consequently, he is at best an utter bore and an offensive blob, since only those capable of absorption and others can be charming. He is trapped in a twilight zone halfway between human and apes and is far worse off than apes because, unlike the apes, he is capable of a large array of negative feelings, hate, jealousy, contempt, disgust, guilt, shame, doubt, and moreover, he is aware of what he is or is, and holy shit, how great does your colon smell because you're pretty far fucking up there, Valerie. Although completely physical, the male is unfit even for stud service. What? What the fuck? He instead eaten up by guilt, shame, fear, insecurity, feelings rooted in male natures. To call a man an animal is to flatter him. He is a machine, a walking dildo. What? What the fuck? There is no human reason for money or for anyone to work more than two or three hours a week at most. All non-creative jobs, practically all jobs now being done, could have been automated long ago. And in a moneyless society, everyone can have as much of the best of everything as she wants. But there are non-human male reasons for maintaining the money work system. Number one is pussy. Pussy, despising his highly inadequate self, overcome with intense anxiety and a deep profound loneliness with his empty self... Hey man, I ain't empty. Desperate to attach himself to any female in dim hopes of completing himself, in the mystical belief that by touching gold he'll turn to gold, the male craves the continuous companionship of women. The company of the lowest female is preferable to his own or that of other men. What the fuck is this bitch going on about? Supplying the non-relating male with the delusion of usefulness, power, and control? A love substitute? Provides the male with a goal? Holy shit, dude. This, this chick is fucking crazy. Scum- What?! Oh, wait, 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 wait. A small handful of scum can take over the country within a year by systematically fucking up the system, selectively destroying property and murder. Scum will become members of the unwork force, the fuck-up force. They will get jobs of various kinds as an unwork. For example, scum salesgirls will not charge for merchandise. Scum telephone operators will not charge for call. Scum office and factory workers, in addition to fucking up their work, will secretly destroy equipment. Scum will unwork a, at a job until fired, then get a new job to unwork at. I don't know how that works, as you'd get your ass blacklisted. Scum will forcibly relieve bus drivers, cab drivers, and subway token sellers of their jobs and run buses and cabs and dispense free tokens to the pub. How? You have to pay for that one way or another! Scum will destroy all useful, useless and harmful objects. Cars, store wi- store windows? Great art? Ex what the fuck is great art? Eventually, scum will take over the airwaves, radio, and TV networks by forcibly relieving the jobs of all radio and TV employees, which would impede... Oh, man, dude, I am going to fucking get fired. That is my industry, ladies and gentlemen. Scum will complete bus barge into mixed uh, couples wherever they are and bust them up. Holy shit. Me and my partner better walk out where we're going. Dude, this is one crazy-ass chick. This is like a fucking call to, like, terrorism. The sick, irrational men who attempt to defend themselves against their disgustingness, when they see scum barreling down on them, they will cling in terror to Big Mama, that's from Metal Gear Solid 4, with her big, bouncy boobies. But boobies... <laughs> I love how, like, she's trying to be so fucking mature in the whole thing, but, like, she uses the word boobies, and that, that just, like, throws me the fuck off. But boobies won't protect them against scum. Big Mama will cling to Big Daddy who will be in corner, shifting in his forceful, dynamic pants. Men who are rational, however, won't kick or struggle or raise a distressing fuss, but will just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show and ride the waves to their demise. Star, it will electronically be possible for him to tune into any specific female he wants and follow in detail to her every movement. The female will kindly, ob obligingly consent to this, as it won't hurt them in the slightest, and it is a marvelously kind and humane way to treat their unfortunate, handicapped fellow. Wow. What a bitch. Apparently, I'm handicapped, man. God damn, Valerie Solanas. You need to fucking get laid or something. That shit, that's fucked up, dude. That is fucking weird. Holy shit. What the fuck is wrong with this woman, man? Holy fuck. This is weird. <laughs> this is really fucking weird. It's like a writ out, written out fucking thing. All right, so here we got a pretty hilarious sort of uh, looking uh, deep web article that I came across. It's called How to Be a Lying Ninja. Now, yet another sexy little text file brought to you by Rusty and the Italic Squirrels. Written by Sewed Lizard and Rhesus Monkey. Edited by Captain Ross. 
The sex file is written for entertainment purposes only, yes. Just because somebody reads this text does not mean that they should try anything in it. This file does not, nor does its authors, advocate the telling of lies, nor anything like that. Even though you shouldn't try this, but you do anyways, it isn't our fault if you get busted. Maybe it was your mistake that you got screwed. Maybe the simple facts of your lie screwed you up. Maybe you're just an idiot. Maybe this whole text file is a load of bullshit. Alright, let's go further into it. Well, now that I've excluded about 99.9% .9 of the population, all that should be left are super intelligent cyborgs from the future. Spider monkeys and contract violators who have let go of all their rights concerning this file. So you want to learn to lie, eh? Well, before you can learn that you have to learn to spot a liar, which is easier than you think. Certain behaviors, things you don't mean to do, give away liars. These can be movements or biological signals. Mainly, I'm going to deal with the physical gestures and such. Things that you don't have to be hooked up to a machine to detect. Liars, special and caught off guards, don't have real memories to refer to and have to rely on their imaginations to fall back on. Without actual experience dictating the story, it becomes almost impossible to keep track of all the details that may be said. That's why an interrogation or detective will ask the same questions again and again in hopes of finding a slip-up. They may ask about details, things like what color was her shirt, in hopes that the subject, suspect's stories won't be consistent. The specifics of the story may be vague when it is first told, which is a fairly reliable indicator of the truth. So what can a liar do to avoid these pitfalls? Simply use real memories as a reference. If you say you were meeting some friends, think of a past occasion where you met some friends. Now, when you're asked the color of her shirt, it'll be white every time. Because that's what you remember it as being. Another problem is witnesses. A liar may try to get a story straight with all the people present. But that's bound to fail. Say you went some hood, Mystery City, last night to go meet some chicks at the deli and get laid. Only trouble is you're grounded that week. Your mom asks you where you went. Quick, what do you say? The secret is to make as little of the story as lie as possible. Tell her that you were at the deli in some hood, studying with Jacob. Or whoever was there. Now, if your mom calls your friend and questions them, your story might just fly, as long as the part about getting laid doesn't come up. But it isn't just your story that gives you away, it might also be you. The way to hold yourself, the way you speak, the way you move, they all hold clues as how honest you are. Luckily, if you know what's that, what's what, you can avoid making such telltale mistakes. See, when you lie, even if you're a comfortable liar, you get a little nervous, or a lot. But when you're nervous, your brain makes a little adrenaline, which basically screws you over. Ever notice how when you lie, your face gets a little itchy? You feel a tick here and there. Yep, that's adrenaline, pal. Do you ever get a little fidgety? Wanting to keep your hands busy? Adrenaline, baby. Your mouth feel dry? You breathe more deeply? Can't relax the body? Adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline. So what can you do about this wondrous chemical? Nothing really, my friend. Just ignore it. When your face feels itchy, don't scratch. Breathe shallow as usual. Don't swallow too much. And if you're nervous, slouch as best as you can and put your arms somewhere comfortable and leave them there. Body language, something we learn early in life, can also give you away. When people lie or bullshit in some other way, they have a tendency to cover their mouth. Like they don't really believe what they say. When you're a little kid, it's very obvious. As we grow older, it becomes more and more subtle. You may touch your nose, your cheek, or your mouth. Talk to someone in a casual sort of way so that they won't feel the need to lie. Are they covering that their mouth in any way? Of course not. If you know what to look for in this gesture, it can be very obvious. It's been said that eyes are the windows to a soul. This little diddly is truer than you know, because you can learn a lot from what a fellow's eyes are doing. For instance, when a person glances around while talking, it often indicates that what part of the brain they're using. These directions vary from person to person, but they are often always there. There are sections for audio, visual, olfactory, tactile, and taste. There are also directions for calling on two types of reasoning, and one for imagination. This is the one we're concerned with. But when you have to come up with a story, what do you do? You have to imagine it, dumbass. For most people, they look up and to the left, and they call on their imagination. And since they have been doing it for as long as they have been making it up, they have gotten into the habit of it. When you lie, try to look pretty much straightforward, glancing down occasionally and naturally. Also, maintain eye contact. Have you ever heard, look me in the eye? Well, that's what they're talking about. Try not to maintain eye contact freakishly long, because that is unnatural and suspicious looking. When you lie, you have to make up a story, okay? Uh, okay, so what word is this? And your brain might need a second to think. We subconsciously try to hide this, but nobody is ever fooled. Here's an example. Mom, Jimmy, have you been masturbating on the roof? <laughs> Boy, ain't that a question your mom always asks you. Uh, Jimmy says, masturbating? Of course not, Mom. Do you know what Jimmy has done wrong? He repeated the beginning of the question. That's like saying, um, only your brain thinks it's slick for hiding it. When you get asked a question, the answer should come like boom in just a second. Mom, Jimmy, have you been giving the dog below jobs again? Wow. Jimmy says, ew, mom, no way. I could get a diseases like that. Do you know what Jimmy did wrong this time? True, he did, he did answer right off, but he spent too much time answering it. 
It sounds like he's trying to convince himself and his mom, doesn't it? Answer immediately and keep it short. This one's a little more subtle, and most people won't pick up on it, but better safe. Well, that's all the things you can control, but what about things that you can't? Remember our little discussion about adrenaline? Well, here's a little more. Adrenaline increases your body temperature, your heart rate, your blood pressure, and your breathing rate. These are the signals that those fancy machines keep track of, and they're very hard to control. By the way, as of 1999, polygraphs aren't admissible in court, so don't sweat them too much. Either you must be incredibly disciplined or control your body completely, or you must believe that you are being truthful. My uncle was in Vietnam, and it was a very hard experience. When he got home, due to all the controversy surrounding the war, nobody wanted to talk to him. He spent so much time keeping it to himself, not thinking about it, not denying it, that he apparently came to believe for a short while that he was never in the war. Apparently, this is not that uncommon. Thing is, if he was given a polygraph test at the time and asked if he was in the war, he could have said no and passed it. While we can't always recreate the sort of trauma at home, we can at least come close. So if you steal a Hope Diamond from the museum, don't tell your friends, don't tell your family, don't tell yourself what happened. If you push it back far enough, it'll all disappear. Try with that 2.14 GPA you got last semester and see how it works. That's all for now. Sewed Lizard. Boy, this guy has given us the best ways to lie, hasn't he? He has made us the lying ninja. And it is no bullshit. Apparently, it seems very plausible. This is how things could go. So, uh, a little funny way. I mean, the whole uh, giving the dog blowjobs is an interesting uh, thing. What the fuck? <laughs> If anybody contributed to the as long as you can more files free to find. Oh, so if you put this into like a deep web search engine, we'll find more. But I think that's all for the how to lie, how to be a lying ninja. Um, I hope for those people who are, you know, a debt or who people wanted to learn how to lie, please don't lie. Lying isn't good. This is how you do it. This guy is giving you the tips on how to be a ninja when it comes to lying and apparently how to lie in front of the feds and the cops when they got you, you know? So if you steal that Hope Diamond, remember, repress it. You won't remember it. You'll pass those polygraph tests. What the fuck, man? Well, at least this is better than all the other shit we've seen so far. You know, a little a little way to keep it all lighthearted, you know what I mean? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at some dank web pages. This is the this is a deep web video that I managed to get, and I haven't seen anything of it yet. This is just where it is. There's no audio that seems to be attached to it, but uh, we'll have to start the video off and see where we go to. So it's a really grungy-looking room. With an obviously fake edit there, with the you know, freezing of stuff, and there's somebody in the bed over there. What the fuck? Uh, what? There's some girl over there just sitting there and eating in front of the laptop. Okay. Well, it doesn't have any weird music. Right now, off the bat, if you can look at the time code in the bottom over there, it's really weird. Okay. I hope she really doesn't fucking look at me and scream. Okay. Um, this is very awkward. It's camera 9, building 5, D7, Thursday, 14th August. There's no year attached to it. Which is weird, because it's just a security camera footage. It should have a year attached, should it not? Um, what? I hope she doesn't get fucking naked or something on the camera. Oh! Oh! She used her blood? That... Oh, that's why her fucking arm is all red. I have food for two more days. There is not water. Oh, dude, she's in captivity. Fuck. She has like a little barcode on her shirt, too. Anybody gets to see this on internet, come find to me. Help me. I don't know if that's blood, necessarily, because it's blue. Shit, she's fucking crying. Dude, she's bleeding out her shirt. Oh, my fucking God, what's going on? Uh, what the fuck? Uh, uh, oh shit, oh my fucking god, that's, what the fuck? Okay, this is, like, up there with the fucking, uh, ramen video, except this one has, like, no audio attached to it. It's just this one girl sitting over here. Apparently, she's in captivity and whatnot now. 
there are some pretty big sort of things that go against this sort of video in the first place. First of all, this has no year attached to it. The video feed itself doesn't look like something that would come out of a CCTV camera. Um, the lack of audio would make sense if it's security footage, because security footage doesn't come with audio attached to it necessarily. Uh, the time code, if you can see in the bottom, extends all the way to like 90, and that's kind of odd, because usually uh, time code, like it, it goes by like hours, so like 13 hours, the minutes, 53 seconds, 21, and this is the frame number. So usually this would actually be over at like 30 frames a second, or 29, considering on the frame rate that they're using. Sometimes it's often less for security footage. So I have no idea why it's going to like 90 and like 100 and stuff. Usually it seems like a clock that's put in like After Effects and coded in. So it has stuff on it that seems really fake. Plus it has this weird like filter that's something that's like slightly probably done in Sony Vegas it seems like. So I don't know. It could basically, it's, it seems like it's fucking fake really. So they already have like a prop for like uh, all this stuff over here. Um, I think she used the marker. I don't think she used like her blood or something which she was like poking at her arm with so... I don't know what the fuck is going on now because it's on the deep web. I don't know because it could either be real or it could be fake, right? So I'm leaning towards the fact that this video is fake. Um, it seems like it. It seems like more logical that it has to be fake because um, there are things going against it. But at the same time, it's deep web. So it could be very real. You know, this woman could unfortunately be fucking dead if she was kept in captivity or something. But uh, it just sort of ended all abruptly. So, I don't know. And it was edited, too, so I don't know, like, maybe maybe it was just something here to scare us on the internet. But regardless, it's fucking creepy as shit, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna knock it for that. It is a very creepy fucking video. That being said, though, that was... <sighs> that was a fucking deep web video that we came across. Holy fucking shit. It's creepy, let me tell you that much. Um, so I hope she's okay. Maybe this might be linked to that fucking, what is it, the, uh, the human experiments video, you know? Or the extreme and experimentation site that we came across at one time. But it's fucking weird, dude. Camera 9, Building 5, D7, Wednesday, 13 August. Um, no year attached, by the way. And this took place around in the afternoon. You know, as we went time more and more on, it started going like 2 in the morning and shit. Is when apparently she had, uh, you know... Like, she she passed away at what seems like 2.47 a.m. If this is to be true. On Friday, 15th August of whatever so-and-so year. It's fucking weird, man. It's really fucking weird. Let me tell you that much. It's kind of giving me a weird sensation in my fucking throat, so I'm just going to back out of this and I'm going to go to a fucking website because that was not something that I should have fucking seen today. Really fucking weird. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is How to Become a Lethal Weapon in Two Weeks. No, we're not talking about the Buddy Cop movie. This is a lethal weapon, okay? This is not a free book. Alright, we cannot give it away. Uh, but this is basically... A book, apparently, where we can become... So what is this? The problem with most martial arts. I've seen many a martial arts experts with all the colorful belts and flying kicks get beat up in the streets. It's just like taking a highly trained circus lion and throwing him into the jungles of Africa. He won't be able to survive in the wild despite his fancy jumps, rolls, and acrobatics. I hate to say it because I spent many years in martial arts schools and on sparring mats, and I've learned a lot. But these days, it's all about colorful belts, expensive uniforms, and monthly dues. I.e. money. Inside the school, there are rules and no restrictions. What the fuck is this? How to become a fucking lethal weapon in two weeks. Alright, so you have to strike first. That's one of the many rules. If you're caught in a dark alley and you got a six-foot monster coming at you with an expression on his face that clearly says you're dead, guess what? You have to shoot first and ask questions later. I think that's a pretty natural reaction. One of the most popular martial arts, karate, requires you to build a certain amount of strength in order to execute effective punches and kicks. Even then, if you run into a guy twice your size, your punches and kicks may not work as well as you think they would. Yes, Jimmy found out that he is not on the internet. Let's face facts here. The average guy does not have years to learn complicated moves and build up enough strength into his strikes. And he certainly doesn't have the money to throw away in learning an art for years and still getting his butt kicked out on the streets. This is why many trained martial artists who perform very well in the ring get their butts kicked out on the streets. And this is why you need to do things differently. Okay. So, alright. So this has taken this guy several years. It's like the fucking Rex Kwon Do of self-defense is what we're reading here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you have to use moves that do not require much strength to be effective or can work just as well on a small person as on a giant. And more importantly, you don't need to learn 101 different techniques and strikes. You only need a handful of them that work well in just about any situation. Always remember that knowing more is not the answer. It's what you can effectively apply and execute that matters. It doesn't matter how much you know, it only matters what you can use. Out on the streets, there are no rules. That means anything goes. Whatever it takes to save yourself and take the attacker down. 
Why don't you use the coffee cream or fucking fireball? That'll fucking scare the shit out of the guy. Don't wait for him to strike. If you sense danger, strike first and end the fight quickly before it gets to a life-threatening stage. Use anything at your disposal. Use your environment and surroundings. Use whatever is available. That means walls, bricks, trash can, beer mugs, tire irons, baseball bats, hair pulling, groin kicks, and yes, even biting in extreme cases. Don't wait for a technical knockout. Hit till the attacker's down and get out of there fast. Keep your distance. Don't wait for the attacker to come close enough to swing a punch. Wow, this is like the fucking guidelines on fighting dirty, dude. And use your head. Avoid being a target in the first place. Prevention is always better than cures. Don't purposely get caught in situations where your life can be put in danger to begin with. Avoid dark alleys and unknown shortcuts. If you're not that sure it's safe, it probably isn't. Don't, okay, whatever possible, take another person with you. Go when it's brighter or busier. When in doubt, don't. If you sense danger up ahead, cross over to the other side of the street or take a different street. Be aware of your surroundings. I don't want you to turn into a paranoid freak. Just learn to pay attention. If you end up in a new club or new neighborhood, turn your awareness up a notch. Alright, if you happen to notice any shady characters around, keep your distance and be aware of their movements. Simple as that. Uh, now, ultimate fighter's power principles, okay? So the principle number one, simplicity is power. You heard it before, but it's definitely worth repeating. Simplicity is power. You will hear me say this over and over again for good reasons. The simpler the techniques are, the easier it'll be for you to learn, remember, and execute them when it counts. The more complicated and foreign the moves are, the harder it will be for you to learn and use of, the, use of them. Most martial artists take years to master because they require you to learn new body movements and postures, moves that do not normally use in our daily lives. My system only uses natural body movements that you already know how to do right now, moves that you use all the time anyways. All I have to do is show you which moves they are and how to execute them. Okay, so we already know this. We don't need to learn anything new. That is why I'm able to create fighters in weeks instead of years, due to telling people to bite them and shove beer mugs down their eye sockets, okay? That's not fighting, dude. That's fucking borderline torture and abuse to the other motherfucker. <laughs> Simplicity also gives you speed. The simpler the moves are, the more quickly you'll be able to execute them. And the quicker you end the fight, the better your chances are of survival. The longer it takes to risk your guess, because with every second, your attacker has more opportunities to take you down. Most real fights only last for a few seconds anyways, and if your opponent is not down by that time, you surely will be. The longer it takes, the riskier it gets. Number two, if the attacker can't stand, he can't fight. If a man loses his balance, he usually loses the fight. Yeah, because as soon as he's down on the ground, you have to stomp his fucking face. I'm sorry, dude. If the attacker can't see, he can't fight. Okay, so blind the guy. Stick a screwdriver into him, man. God damn it. What is this? The back of his neck, small of his back, back of his knee, Achilles heel. You can very easily get to the chokehold position once you're behind him. If he can't see, he can't fight. Now, if the attacker can't think, he also can't fight. So this is where you use the uh, element of surprise. So you can strike the ear in certain ways, uh, strike the nose, distract him with a fake punch. Um, screaming can also work well in distracting and are confusing. That Dude, I would shit my pants if I was fighting some guy with screaming and biting my fucking ear off. That is fucking scary, dude. If the attacker can't breathe, he can't fight. All right, so choke him, man. Your number one weapon. If you don't train your mind, no weapon or technique will... This is like the most cliched fucking book. It's like what Mr. Miyagi would write if he was a little more demented in the fucking head, dude. It's like, Daniel-san, remember, the most confidence in a fight is great. But you must also remember to bite the ears off and scream during a fucking fight. Daniel-san, do you notice there's fucking... Beer mugs around? Yes, Mr. Miyagi. Well, fuck the wax on, wax off. Stick that down in his throat and say, Woo! I won, dude. If only miss, if only this motherfucker was there during the taping of Karate Kid. That would be a hell of an amazing... It, it's already a great movie, man. But holy shit, it might be like Saw level or like Hostel level. If you had that motherfucker in there. God damn. So we're back on the Intel Exchange, and it seems like something weird is about to happen in a few days of the posting of the video. Now, on September 23rd, 2015, dark dates are coming. Hi, now this is written by Kanoa, which is a frequent poster on the Intel Exchange. It's written that, hey everyone, it's been a long time since I was last on here. I have been traveling like crazy, and needless to say, not everywhere is high-speed internet, and as most of you know, some places are even on dial-up, making tour just awfully slow. There's a few people here I know I deal in different things that require constant traveling and moving, Today I was finally back in a place that has fast enough internet to get on here. I am glad to see this place is still standing after the last set of raids. 
Anywho, I have a question for everyone here. I've recently run into another dorm's doomsday, another doomsday cult deal, and they are claiming special intel on something bad that is going to happen on the 23rd of September. They are claiming something like an EMP or something else will hit and the economy is about to go down. Also, the people who are on welfare, social security, and so on in the U.S. will be without. So has anyone else heard of this? One guy involved apparently worked for some government place, but the rest seem like a bunch of religious nuts who believe Jesus gives them physical psychic abilities or something. So anything else? Anyone? Uh, now somebody else says I have an SS case pending right now. It seems to be about biblical jubilees. Uh, apparently it's, uh, what is this? Coming of Christ and the rapture. This is gathered from a small snippet of the book of Daniel. Apparently Daniel 2.24. Of course Daniel 9 is seven metaphors. There's going on places of rapture in a lifetime again. I call utter hogwash based on previous raptures and apocalypse which come to nothing and are predicted on. Alright, so over here is somebody's like, you got a name for the number of members. And then they're like, interesting, could be worth to keep an eye on them. One can never know. There's also a rumor of an, ast rumor of an asteroid that's three miles across. There's also rumors about Nibiru returning. Yeah, September 23rd seems to be a red letter date. Personally, I'm more worried about July 15th to December 15th. There's a lot of military action. And then it's like, I'd remove the remove part as it encourages other removes to jump in and degrade their own anonymity. Too late for you. What do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. Personally, I, I don't believe in the Nibiru thing. Okay, this is a bunch of uh, conspiracy theorists right now, but, um... What the fuck is going on over here? Beldavia, he's more HTML edited. Let me go open these files up on a new tab, by the way. They might be government secrets. And we all know how much we love government secrets over here. Um, okay. It seems like on the Intel Exchange, this is a pretty active community of people. Now, I don't know how much of this is, what is this, Near Earth Object Program? Um, the asteroid is discovered March 13, 2015. Um, potentially hazardous asteroid based on its orbit. To reinforce the classified nature of this asteroid, this is a NASA thing too, we are using a different naming system. Um, very little is known about, uh, it's quite distant from Earth, about 0 0.34 astronomical units. Approaching our planet and slowly brightening, impact is estimated to occur on September 28, 2015 near Houston, Texas. So, it could happen this month actually, in 2015. By NASA. Now, if you go over here, uh, table of this impact, um, what is this? XI Zeta, optic beacon coordinates. Impact will cause a tidal wave 20 feet high in deep ocean water, capsizing some small ships. Estimated shows a tidal wave will reach American shores in the range of 200 feet to 250 feet in height. The flood zone will reach up to 50 miles inland. Death tolls estimated at the time of writing range between 20 million and 100 million people across the Americas, Caribbean, Africa, and Europe. Dude, if this isn't like fake, that's fucking weird and scary. I hope it's fucking fake, dude, because that's, that's this month it could happen if this shit hits Houston, Texas. So before I end the video, we're going to end it on a really creepy note. If this stuff is fake, then hopefully, you know, God willing, I'll be here next week doing more deep web and creepypastas. Um, but holy shit, it seems like in the next week or two, we might have a fucking asteroid that'll fuck us over, or there's a doomsday cult believing that some shit's gonna go weird. I'm personally interested, so I'll keep you posted through. Um, I'm gonna be checking this off and off and off, and so, if y'all wanna come and check out, then, you know, follow me on Twitter, and I'll, you know, I'll tweet out if this shit is actually real and whatnot, but holy shit, if this is fucking somewhat true, man, end of the fucking world, dude. It's fucking weird. Um, that being said, this has been another, uh, deep web browsing video. I hope you enjoyed this week. Uh, we've seen some really dark, depraved shit, uh, that video we saw. Kind of weird. Um, in fact, very weird. Uh, could be fake, most likely, is what I'm thinking. But, um, again, that's what the deep web really is. It's, uh, some lulzy stuff. Again, we've seen how to make a firebomb out of coffee creamer. And we've also learned how to be a lying ninja. And... That was an interest. This was an interesting week, I gotta say, in all honesty. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.